So you want to install an off the grid solar setup in your vehicle. Today, I'll show you how with these 10 easy steps. Installing solar so you can run things like lights, a fan, charge your computer may seem like an untenable task at first. However, I have never worked with electricity in my entire life and I figured it out. Hopefully you can learn from me and not make the same mistakes I did. Before you get bogged down in all of this, you need to do two things. First, get an understanding of how much solar power you actually need. I've put a good link below. I chose 400 watts of solar, 300 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery, 40 amp charge controller, and a 1500 watt inverter. Before you go buying anything, you need to draw yourself one of these. Now this may seem like some crazy man's chicken scratch, but I can assure you it's way more than that. It's a crazy man's diagram. But drawing yourself a diagram will give you a great understanding of how you want to lay everything out so that you know how to bring it to life. One of the first things you want to do is mount a large piece of plywood to the frame of your vehicle. I would suggest at least three feet by two feet tall. That'll give you plenty of space for all this shit. I didn't start with that and quickly learned my mistake. Make note of any potential grounds. So I've got one here. This is a good ground because I can add a lot more layers to it if I need to. You want to mount your charge controller first and your battery and connect those two. That's on now. Negative to negative, positive to positive. We have power, 13 volts, baby. Oh, let's go. And then you want to bring in the solar right into your charge controller. Four 100 watt solar panels and one jacked up Southern boy. Andrew came with a good idea to map things out before we get on the roof. How'd you figure that one out? <laughs> Got screwed up. <laughs> We're gonna have a negative tree of all the negative wires coming into here and then a positive tree with all the positive wires coming into here. I'm gonna put the fuse at the end and then have these wires going through into the rig. We marked all the holes with a pencil and we put a little caulk through. We are standing in definitely the place that your mother would be very excited for you to stand on top of the van. Two panels on, third one in, and then a fourth one right where I'm standing. And here he comes. We've taken all of our positives running here to a cord here. We've got all of our negatives all running here because we are wiring these in. Oh, yeah. Parallel. It's a very scary part drilling straight through the roof. Oh, hello. For whatever reason, Renogy gives you a 10 amp fuse, but you really want a 30 amp fuse. After we've done that, the next step is the fuse box. This is a sweet combo by Blue C, where it combines a negative bus bar with a fuse box, a positive and a negative for every appliance that I have running. The fan is right here. And it doesn't have a negative because we grounded it to the chassis of the vehicle. Once you have this, you're in really good shape. Lights are pretty easy. You just take this dual electrical cord. There's two sides to it. I was using the text on one side as the positive and you just start at your bus. My lights that go to the back go positive here, connect to a fuse and then negative comes here and it's already grounded. To really take things up another notch, we are playing with more electricity. So we're wiring a switch. Ah, oh, butternut squash. I gotta ground it. So we cut out ourselves a little plate. We're gonna put a switch and a couple lights back here. Y'all stay tuned. So we can light up the gear. Stay tuned to see if anyone electrocutes themselves. Like last time. We have a lot of electricians working right now. <laughs> Got two in the back. What do you need? Power. Should you we let them know? Power's on! Gotta let the neighbors know the power's on. Now the power's on. Are you sure? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, ho, 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 <laughs> yeah, buddy. Is this just one wire? Yes. No, it's spliced. I had to add some. <laughs> Men busy at work. 
my van, my inverter, <laughs> all my electricity <laughs> things. Come give me a hug, my inverter is plugged. About to pop off. Show to you. Man, I can be happy because my van's a fucking mess. <laughs> Tonight, fingertips. Pull a lot. The same with the lights that go to the front. Got our positive, which goes to here, which has a fuse. And then our negative comes to here and it's grounded. We were tricky. We took this wire and we ran it up through the wall, out the top to a switch here, all the way up through here, here, all the way through there, back there, around back to there. We left a little extra, we cut it, prepped these wires and taped it before we put this roof up. Since we did that, it's a lot easier to connect the lights later by twisting the positive and negative wires to the existing wires in the roof. Ah! <laughs> Dim switch. Oh yeah, oh. we got the mojo working. <laughs> As I was saying about the lights, you just grab the tape and there are ends. This certainly takes time, but as long as you prep and mark the wires, it should go quickly. Brittany is coming in for her first visit since the lights and roof are up. It looks so good. I'm starting to see it instead of just like an empty van. On the dimmer, check it out. Oh my God. But you want a little bit of light? Okay. And you want it to pump? It's gonna look so good. Probably the easiest and most satisfying part of the entire van build. Your light with two springs, you dig one in, above the top, hide your wires in there, and then you put the second one flipped back, and voila. Here comes the major bummer. I've already installed this fan. Cocked it endlessly. Everything's good except for the fan doesn't work. Fortunately, Max Air was really cool and sent me a new one. But now I have to reinstall the new one. <sighs> Major epiphany. Just realized I don't have to unscrew that stuff at all. I can just put this one in the hole and we're good to go, baby. I already installed one fan, but since I forgot to record that, you get to see me reinstall the second one. <laughs> Just undoing all the work I've done. One, two, three panels down. Taking the fourth one down so I can replace this stupid thing. Look at the job we did here. Guess what? Worthless! After you get the fan in, now you've got a positive and negative. First, I'm gonna run the positive over to my fuse box. I could run the negative to my negative bus bar, or I know that I have a ground right here, and I'm gonna ground the negative. I'm connecting any two wires. First thing you gotta do is strip them. All these different slots are for different wire gauges. Nice clean wire. I'm gonna feed this up. Originally I did this before the ceiling was up. This one came stripped, but not as long as I want. These heat shrink wraps are sweet. Highly recommend them. Comes like this, cut it to your desired length. You slide it over one of the wires before you twist them together. I like to kind of wrap these two around each other and then come in with this one for the over the top. So solid. Let me slide this up and torch it. See how nice that looks. We're gonna close this ceiling back up. We've got the positive wired. We should make sure that it works. So I've got ground here that's going through the metal frame of the vehicle. You can see when I touch it, pop. There it goes. So now we're gonna kill the power and finish wiring this. Power is off, we can continue. We turned our power back on. Now the ultimate test. So this should work. So the only thing that I could possibly imagine happened was the fuse blew. So I pulled it out and it's fine. Put it back in, double check the ground. Oh, 
Yes! We've got everything wired. You can see the power's looking good. The switch is on. The fuse box is good. We've now mounted the inverter with our plugs going up so we have easy access based on the beautiful diagram. We understand that it's going directly to the, from the negative to the inverter. And then we've got the positive goes through a switch through a 100 amp fuse into the inverter. And then that puts out 110 volt and we need to ground it. It's very scientific came with 8 gauge and we need one odd, which is electrician for huge as shit. And this is actually the totally wrong gauge. They're literally trying to kill you. Be careful. Here we have big rig wire, one aught. These things are huge and like impossible to bend. I would definitely recommend pliers, especially two sets of pliers makes it easy to bend. Don't be afraid to use your foot. The tough part comes in attaching the ring terminals onto this end. I'll take this, twist and push it as far up as it'll go. And then what we really want to be cognizant of is the angle. This is going up, and then I want this one to actually be facing down. So I'm going to twist it a little more, facing down. Perfect. Two months ago when I started this project, I learned this lug crimper, which is pretty cool. You just put this in here, hit it with a hammer, and it makes it like that. So let's see it up close. Put that in there. Take it out and you can see the stamp of approval. Definitely highly recommend this thing. That one too. Really nice. After you crimp everything, don't use Gorilla Tape like I did at first. If you do, you're stupid. Welcome to my world. You're in good company. You want to use electrical tape. You can see just how beautiful these things all start to look. Look at this. I'm going to recommend a stiff drink while you do this last bit. And turn your power off. Zero or as close to zero as possible. Throw your switch off too, so you don't die. You probably wouldn't die from a car, but you'd get electrocuted. It wouldn't be fun. You get a good zap. Right, so we have taken the negative to the negative. Now time to mess with the positive. Unfortunately, this isn't really in an ideal situation. So I'm gonna have to wire it up, around, and then back down. <laughs> Hilarious enough, because I don't think there's enough space here. Oops. To hook up the positive, we take from the battery, through a switch, then through this fuse to the inverter, and then we're going to ground it as well. Chances are your ANL inline fuse came like this. Screwed in, of course. This is only 40 amp. And this beast needs not 100, not 200, but 250 amps power. You just go into this side. And then just make sure you're sandwiched between these two washers. And I just read you can't use Gorilla Tape as electrical tape, so make note of that. Also, don't use it on painting, as Brittany can show. I think you'd have a tough time um, getting it up. We'd have great coverage. So do yourself a favor and be smarter than me and actually get the right tool because I'm cutting this big of a wire with this big of a gap and it's taking five minutes to cut. My best advice would be when it comes to wiring the really thick wires on the inverter is to try to get someone else to do it because it's not fun. The diagram is back. I have a feeling the diagram is going to be a star. I'm gonna force the diagram to be a star. So we still gotta put the switch in because we got the positive coming here. Boom, 250 amps. We're gonna put the switch probably right here. But come down here and then we're done. So easy. This is a big moment. We've taken this diagram and we've brought it to life with solar panels, inverter, and a gigantic battery. A lot of time, a lot of love, a lot of energy. First, flip the power switch. Make sure the power is going to our appliances. 
You can hear the fan just turned on. That's a good thing. We're gonna flip our inverter switch. That's power. It is green, which means power. Woohoo! Hell yeah! The true test. It's not doing anything. Oh, it's charging! Yay! <laughs> Thank God. So we've got all of our cords and stuff coming here, but we don't want a box here with all our stuff in it because that's where my feet go. So we're gonna wire a lot of the plugs and stuff over here and then into a box right here. In this nook I'm creating here, I need to mount my cigarette lighter and my inverter remote. We're gonna leave space for the power strip. And these things are pretty easy to cut the hole for because I bought the right drill bit. Now we've got our box cut. I just cut the hole for the cigarette lighter. Let's take a look. It's like drowning in there. Could slide all the way through. Mega fail. But fortunately, I'll make I'll make this bigger and put the inverter here, and then I'll try a new one for the outlet up here. We jigsawed it. Perfect. We drilled the hole out. Now, we really hope it fits. It still doesn't. What a bummer. A slightly smaller drill bit, just grinding the sides. I was able to get it in. I need 14 gauge wire. Once we've measured our wire length, we're gonna strip each side. Crimp this on here, boom. I do a little electrical tape just for style points. We're gonna crimp a ring terminal onto the other. So we've done this to a positive, now we need to do it to a negative. These little staples are particularly good for manipulating wires up and around weird areas. This is the back of our cubby. We take this wire, plug it in there, the inverter. Before we go tacking anything up, we wanna make sure that this still works as we hoped. Inverter switch, it's off. And it's on. I can tell because I'm charging my drill battery off the inverter. Getting it off of everything else. For once I actually saved one of these. Okay. Cool. So that's done. Let's wire the outlet, huh? Positive is on the left, negative is on the right. Positive first. This thing on all the way over here. And we're gonna put it in an empty spot. We'll put the negative, we'll align them. Okay, and should have power, right? Wrong. We should not have power because there's no fuse in here to close the circuit. So we gotta figure out what fuse to use. And that's all based on amperage. I had to look up how many amps I needed. One thing you absolutely need to buy, a fuse set like this. I needed, this one's 15, so I got 15 amp. You can see I got big, small, all the sizes. This is what you want. When a fuse blows in the middle of nowhere, you want to know that you have anything you could possibly need. And they don't even pay me, I'm just hyped. All right, so let's plug this in and see how it goes. Plug our 15 amp fuse. Now it should work. Plugged in. Oh, blue light is definitely promising. Oh yeah, power strip mounted, inverter, cigarette lighter. The wires are all tucked up all the way over there. Oh yeah. And after all of that being done, it's still a very clean look. And I would love to see someone improve on it. So show me what you got. And there you have it folks. Don't have to be a genius to install electricity in your van. The last step that we're not gonna cover because I'm talking full legit off the grid no vehicle power is what's called shore power and alternator charging. I'm going off my solar panels, baby. I really wanna see how far I can push these solar panels. So I'm not gonna set up alternator charging yet. And I don't think I'll ever set up shore power cause that's weak and that's not off the grid. That's on the grid. There you have it. Not that difficult and you can do it too. Not only are you an electrician, but you're also a carpenter now too. Yeah. Or, you're not only a carpenter, but now you're an electrician too. Let's go. <laughs>